Welcome back to Mr. C's Cooking Experiment. This is episode six. We're going to do a yellowtail snapper with two-tone mashed potatoes, spinach and kale terrine, and a saffron butter sauce. Uh, we're also going to debut something new here called Mr. K's Wine Pairings. I've known Rich Kowalik's for over a decade. I met him up in Ohio. He used to write a wine column years ago in Ohio, and he's got a great palate for wine and a wonderful palate for food as well and marrying the two together. So I think you're going to like his selections that he's going to pair with this dish we're doing here on this episode. But first things first, don't forget to go and subscribe right down there in the red button and hit the bell next to it as well so you can get the notifications when I do new videos. And uh, without further ado, let's get on with the ingredients. Okay, first things first. This is a one pound yellowtail snapper. And when you're picking out a fish at the store, just make sure they're giving you one that has eyes that aren't cloudy and uh, gills that are bright red. And voila, you have a filleted fish. Um, what you wanna do is um, you wanna take the bones out of these fillets, but we're gonna use the, 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 the rest of the fish. We're gonna reserve these fillets. We're going to use the rest of the fish and we are going to be putting it into a pot with celery, onions, carrots, thyme, black peppercorns, white wine, lemon, and water. And we're going to simmer this for about 45 minutes. All right, next on the agenda, the two-tone potatoes. We have two cups of Yukon uh, gold potatoes that have been peeled and cut into large dice two cups of purple sweet potatoes that have been peeled and cut into large dice, half a cup of whole butter, three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream. Now, uh, there's an important um, uh, piece of equipment that I'm gonna show you that goes well here when making these mashed potatoes, and that is a food mill. A food mill will eliminate all of uh, the lumps that might occur by using any other kind of apparatus uh, when making mashed potatoes. So it's a good piece of equipment to have when you do this. All right, here's a real fun part of the dish, and this is gonna be the spinach and uh, kale terrine. I took 10 ounces of raw spinach, and I blanched it, I dropped it in hot boiling water and blanched it in ice water came out with about that. It looks about a, about a cup of, of cooked spinach. I have one large egg white, about a quarter cup of Brunoise uh, red bell pepper, and then we blanched, individually blanched, these leaves of um, this um, red kale. Um, you need about three or four large uh, pieces. And uh, I did a little bit of extra just in case. Uh, but uh, let's get started with how we actually put this all together. So first things first, we're going to use our trusty little Cuisinart here. We're going to put our spinach in there. And our egg white. I did fail to mention one other ingredient, and that is about a half a cup of cream. Add in some salt. Okay, so we're gonna add in a pinch of nutmeg there. This all gets pureed. Add a little bit more salt, just for good measure. this into the mixing bowl. Like so. I'm 
fold in the, the Brunoise red pepper. That's going to give it a nice color pop there when it finishes cooking and we display it. Okay. To the side. Now, the terrines. These are about one by four by two uh, small little loaf pans. You can get these in a specialty store if you want. And we're going to lay in some of our kale like so. Overlapping the sides, just so you know. Big leaves will be able to practically cover this whole thing when you do it. Like so. Then you're going to want to put your mix in. in there. Then you're going to want to fold these back over like so. So there is a key part to doing this. You're going to want to preheat your oven at 350 degrees. You're going to want to put them into a pan like so. And here's something that's going to help you out. Um, you're going to want to put hot water for a water bath in here. All right. There's a reason beyond that because the bottom line here is that in order for this thing to cook properly, you're going to need to start off with warm water in here because it won't take as long in the oven to get back up to temperature. Therefore, it's going to cut your cooking time down by half at least. You're going to want to cover these lightly with foil, each one of them. Put them in the oven for about 30-35 minutes. That is how you do the spinach terrine. All right, we're coming around the bend here. So now we're gonna start our fish. Um, and as you can see here, I've made some incisions. That'll help it um, not curl up when the skin side gets cooked, but we're gonna start with the flesh side down first. Uh, you might notice here, I've got the mashed potatoes already done, wrapped in saran wrap. That is because they're gonna be put into a piping bag layered so that it comes out in a ribbon when we pipe it out. And also, uh, in this pot right here, we have our fish fumé that is now uh, reducing down to about a quarter of its uh, volume, and we're going to add um, some saffron to it and then some butter to finish our sauce. So when doing this fish, want to make sure you have a nice hot pan. Skin side down first. No need at all to finish this in the oven. It will finish on top here perfectly fine. It'll be nice and crispy on the skin side and um, be a nice soft flesh when it's finished. Alright, so we're going to start uh, getting ready to plate. So we're going to get our mise en place together, our things in place. And the first thing I'm going to show you real quickly is um, the star tip that I'm using here is really a round tip um, to do these mashed potatoes. And as you can see from before, I have them in these saran wrap, okay, 
and you've got to put them in separately with the saran wrap. Pull it out of there. You're going to want to take a rubber spatula, something to the sort, kind of pat it down. Then you're going to want to do the same thing with the purple mashed potatoes. Squeeze them in there as well. You're ready to get them started. And if you see that I kind of did them with a little space here. Turn it around. And then you're going to want to squeeze it all the way through. I'm going to do this all the way on the side here. Okay. So that you can see, again, that it's half and half. Right, that's the first thing we're going to do. Put them back on here. All right. Now the spinach terrine, as you can see, that turned out very well. What we're going to do with this? Turn it this way. All right. And we're going to cut it on a diagonal here. Okay. Get that ready. See, that turned out very nicely. You can see the red specks of uh, red pepper in there as well. Put those to the side. We have our sauce working on the stove. Now we're going to add butter to that the saffron and the uh, fume. And the fish is ready as well. And we're going to do some edible flowers and also some chive oil, I believe, at the end. Okay, so we're going to start plating now, and we're going to start with the mashed potatoes. Right. And a little bit of that terrine as well. Saffron butter sauce we're going to put over here. All right. And beautiful cooked piece of fish. Turn this around a little better so you can see it. Is that? And then we'll start adding our garnish. Pea pod here. Right, so as I said earlier, it's time for our good friend Mr. K to do his wine pairing with this dish of snapper. So take it away, Mr. K. Thank you, Chef. I'm really happy to be here with you today. When you told me you were going to be cooking a uh, snapper dish today, I remember that I think I got to try an earlier iteration of this dish a few years ago. And if I remember it correctly, it was absolutely fabulous. And I'm sure that this year's adaptation is even better. So you asked me to come up with some wine ideas for the snapper. And so I've gone in two different directions. First, I was taken by the fact that snapper is one of those fish that just tastes like the sea. And that's so beautiful about snapper. And so I wanted to focus a little bit on that aspect of uh, a snapper dish and also to um to try to come up with a wine that would be a little bit more for an everyday drinking wine so something that would be in everyone's budget i settled on this great grillo from sicily uh, this is from santa ninfa sicily grillo is a grape that uh, used to be primarily used in marsala wine uh, but recently growers have started making a really nice 
uh, still wine from it. Uh, this particular Grillo is about $12 a bottle, so it's perfect for everyday drinking. Um, it's grown on hillsides near the sea, so it has that really nice brininess and crispness that you get. Uh, a really wonderful minerality, and it will go great with both the snapper and with the uh, spinach and Swiss chard terrine that you have added to the dish. It's got really nice character in the nose. Beautiful. Beautiful minerality in the mouth. Uh, light in color, light in body, perfect for everyday drinking, and it will be perfect with your snapper. My other selection is from one of my favorite California wineries. This is Graciana, and this is the 2016 Suzanne's Blend Chardonnay. Uh, Graciana is a fabulous story. It's owned by Trini and Lisa Amador. They are um, located up near Healdsburg in the area that produces a lot of great Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. Um, as you know, that area has been decimated in recent times by some really bad wildfires. And Trini and Lisa have really been leaders in working with the community uh, to try to support those who have lost their livelihoods and lost their homes. Uh, they have donated a significant portion of the revenue from their wines over the past four years to firefighters and also to, uh, to restoration area or efforts in the area. Um, this particular Chardonnay is made by their son, who is the winemaker. Uh, he first got interested in wine as a young man, and Trini and Lisa caught him in the garage trying to make wine when he was 12 years old. So he ended up studying winemaking and becoming one of the top young winemakers in all of California. The Suzanne's Vineyard Chardonnay is really a great wine. It is citrusy, but has that nice kiss of oak that makes it very, very smooth and easy to drink. When I think about your saffron sauce, uh, this is the this is the wine that comes to mind for me. Now it's it's really really a pretty wine. Mm. Just just the right amount of oak, not overpowering, but it adds that little touch of smoothness uh, to the palate. It's a beautiful gold color. Uh, it's drinking wonderfully now. This particular Chardonnay will keep getting better. Uh, for the next several years. Um, it goes for about $35 a bottle. So this is not an everyday drinking wine. Uh, it's more of a special occasion wine, but I think that that snapper dish that you put together is definitely a special occasion dish. So either of these two wines would go great with the snapper. Thank you for asking me to be part of your, your program. And I look forward to doing more wines for more great dishes from Mr. C. Take care. Thank you, Mr. K, for those wonderful wine selections, especially the Sicilian one with the grapes that are grown down by the sea that are perfect for the fish, or the Chardonnay from California that has the oak that complements the sauce. Just great. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and share if you liked it. And uh, we're going to start doing something new here. They're going to start... Uh, making shorter videos, and we're going to call them uh, Quick Bites, B-Y-T-E-S, because they're going to be short videos, so keep an eye out for that. In our next full episode, we're going to be doing Rack of Lamb, something we haven't done yet, and uh, I look forward to doing it. So, as usual, if you eat well, you're going to be well. Thanks for watching.